Thanks, Bert. That's good advice. Does anyone know what he said? Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. Can you hear my earrings jingling? I hope this isn't going to be distracting during the video. Also, my hair is wet because my curls did not take after my shower yesterday. I diffused and everything. I don't know if it's because I put too much oil in it or something, but I woke up this morning and it was like all over the place. Anyways, back to these cute little earrings. Little Doe on Instagram sent these to me. A very sweet follower was like, I want to send you some earrings. And she sent me the most beautiful moons in the whole world. And they have a gorgeous little dangly star on them and crystals. And they feel so well made and beautiful. And I can't wait to wear them all the time. But that's not what this video is about. You did not click on this video to find out why my hair is wet and how jingly my earrings are. No, you clicked on this video because you, like me, have an interest in me creating a makeup look inspired by Fearless Taylor's version. I will admit, I have been putting off doing Fearless for my makeup and music series because it's just so hard for me to choose a top five. I have two songs tied for my number five. The first time in makeup and music history, I could not decide on a top five. Such a no-skip album for me, and especially Taylor's version with all of these vault tracks. There's like 25 songs on the album. How am I supposed to label that down to my top five? Needless to say, this was a big challenge for me, but I do feel really passionately about the songs in my top five, so I'm super excited to tell you about them. And of course, we're going to create a gorgeous makeup look. I have more glitter. You guys, somebody commented on my last video, the Midnight's video, where I was wearing a different glitter saying I should try Slay Fire, and Slay Fire freaking sent me a custom glitter palette. I'm so excited. There's some stars in here, so I definitely want to play it with those. We're going very glittery for Fearless. She was so glittery in the Fearless era. If you look at any pictures, she's always wearing like super sequiny dresses, like the guitar is all bedazzled and everything. It is just such a glittery, sparkly era. I have some gold water activated liner here from Glisten 2 that I might use. I have some gold multi-chromes from ColourPop. Like we have lots of sparkly silver and gold shades to play with and I'm so excited. Let's just get right into it. So, if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want to see me create a makeup look inspired by Fearless Taylor's version and talk about my top five songs on the album, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching because it's coming at you right now. So usually I start with eyeshadow and everything, but you guys, I'm going to shock you today. I'm going to start with mascara because often when I'm working with glitters, I find that I end up getting them in my eyelashes and then it's so hard to go over it with mascara because it like dries down and everything. So I figured today I'd start with mascara. That way I can get really, really messy with it. And then I'll just use a Q-tip and some micellar water to clean it up. Anyways, I'm sure you are so excited to hear my top five, especially since I teased you saying my number five slot is shared by two songs, so I'll go ahead and tell you the two songs, which are Untouchable and You All Over Me. I could not, for the life of me, kick one of these songs off my top five. Both of these songs are ones that have grown on me very recently. Like, not that I didn't like them when I first listened to Fearless, especially Fearless Taylor's version, but just recently they have really, really grown on me. Her voice sounds so beautiful on both of these, and the song Untouchable just makes me so happy and I feel like it goes really well with the makeup look we're gonna go with today too because she says in the middle of the night when I'm in this dream it's like a million little stars spelling out your name so cute so beautiful definitely gonna go with the makeup look we're doing here today also did you know that the song untouchable is technically a cover? I don't know if it's just like written by someone else. What does it say at the end? Oh, well her name is listed as a writing credit too, but it seems like she wrote it with other people, but it's like the other version of this song is by like an emo band and it's totally different, which is absolutely wild. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the band. I'll put it on the screen here, but their version is also amazing. It's just so cool how different the two versions are. I love it. I am getting mascara all Oh, I just stabbed myself in the eye. As I was saying, I'm getting mascara everywhere, but that's okay. I'm gonna clean it up. Don't worry, I'm gonna clean it up. And then You All Over Me is one that has also grown on me super recently. The best and worst day of June was the one where I met you. Are you kidding me? With your hands in your pocket and don't you wish you had me grin, but I did. So I smiled and I melted like a child. No amount of freedom gets you clean. I still got you 
all over me. What a freaking beautiful song. I love when Taylor sings about not being able to wash somebody off of her. It reminds me of Clean from 1989, which obviously came afterwards, but I just love when she writes about that subject matter. Same thing in Illicit Affairs. You taught me a secret language. You know I can't speak with anyone else. I love when Taylor sings about a lost love that just will not wash off of her because it does feel like that, right? When you break up with someone, even if you know it's for the right reasons and you know that this is just not meant to be. I think she says that in the song too. And found out what it was to turn around and see that we were never really meant to be. So like, yeah, in this song too, she acknowledges like we were never meant to be, but no amount of freedom gets me clean. I still got you all over me. Like it's so hard to completely wash yourself of a person who you had a relationship with and who you did love at one point. I just think that's a beautiful subject matter to write about and I love whenever Taylor sings songs like this and her voice sounds stunning on this song. I mean, so her voice, people keep saying like her voice has matured so much since the original recording of Fearless and like this is an incredible example of that. Her voice sounds ethereal. She sounds like a literal angel. I love you all over me. All right, I have made a spur of the moment decision to draw a water activated liner star on the outer portions of my eyes, like not the full star, but like a boop, 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 three points of a five point star. How's it gonna go? I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna freehand it. So that's, that's always a risk, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. I'm gonna be fearless, if you will. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to my number four song on Fearless, which is Jump and Fall. This is another one that is like a recent favorite. I have been jumping and falling in love with Jump and Fall. I think the reason I love this song so much is because it gives me like very 90s country singer vibes. Like it gives me very like Shania Twain vibes at a point. It's super twangy. I mean, obviously Fearless is a country album, but Jump and Fall, like such a 90s country singer vibe to it. And I love that. It is it's just such a cute song. It's about falling in love. It's about taking that jump to full, allow yourself to fall in love with someone and that can be scary, but she's telling this person like, don't be afraid to jump and fall, like I'll catch you and I just, I think that's so cute. It's such a sweet concept. You can tell this is like a young love song because it's just all about like the magical feeling of falling in love and I think it's adorable. The part that really sounds like Shania Twainy to me is when she says, I had time to think it all over and all I can say is come closer. She goes, I had time to think it all over and all I can say is come closer. Like it just gets that Shania Twain vibes. I like the way you everything I ever wanted. It's so cute. And in the beginning of the song, she says, I like the way you sound in the morning. We're on the phone. And without a warning, I realize your laugh is the best sound I have ever heard. Which is just like a, such a, a true sign of being in love with someone. I think it's so sweet. She mentions that later in the Reputation album in the song, oh shoot, in the song New Year's Day, please don't ever become a stranger who's laughing. I could recognize anywhere. She so frequently in her love songs mentions the person's laugh and I think that is such a big part of being in love with somebody is that you fall in love with your laugh. I think my boyfriend's laugh is phenomenal. I it's like it's just it's my favorite laugh in the world. Like I you fall in love with a person's laugh when you fall in love with them and I love that she mentions that. I feel like that's not something that's talked about as often in love songs. They talk about falling in love with people's smile and their eyes and all of that, but I love that she's like, I realize your laugh is the best sound I've ever heard and I just think it's such a sweet love song. I love Jump and Fall. All right, hello, hello. I have lashes on. Do they look great? Mm, debatable, but that's that's fine. Okay, now let's move on to some shimmer. I'm gonna I'm gonna list all the products down below. I always forget to say that in the beginning. But this is the shade Sweetzer Ave 
from ColourPop. That must be a place in Los Angeles because I've never heard of it. But all right, moving on to my number four, three, three, we're on three now. Moving on to my number three song on Fearless, which is Forever and Always. This song connects me to my childhood so much. Fearless came out when I was in eighth or ninth grade, I think, and it was the first Taylor album that I like really, really listened to because I mentioned in the debut video that I didn't really listen to debut when it came out because it came out in 2006. I, I was 12. I only had an mp3 player with 60 songs on it. I, I just like was straight up not aware of new music. I like teardrops on my guitar but anyways not what this video is about. But when Fearless came out all I had to hear was Love Story to fall in love with Taylor Swift. Love Story ironically is not in my top five although I do love it but yeah I made my mom drive me to Target immediately so I could buy the CD of Fearless and I listened to it non-stop and Forever and Always was my favorite song when I first listened to Fearless. So I feel very connected to this song. I was just thinking the other day, I had like a little moment where I was feeling very introspective and I was like, man, you know, sometimes I think about my past self and I'm like, there's so little that I still relate to from my past self. You know, as you grow up, you evolve, you change, and sometimes you can feel a little detached from your teenage self. But then I was listening to this song and it got me thinking like, oh shoot, you know, of everything that has changed between then and now, 13 years since I first listened to this album, I still love this song so freaking much. Me and 15 year old me, 28 year old me and 15 year old me could get into a room and still rock out to Forever and Always and still say it's one of the best songs she's written and I think that's really beautiful. But yeah, this song impacted me in a lot of ways. Like I straight up after this song came out, I would not say forever to anyone in my life that I did not actually think was gonna be in my life forever. Whether it was a boy, whether it was a friend, like if I did not think this person was truly gonna stick around forever, I didn't use words like forever because I remember Taylor Swift like flash saying flashback to when you said forever and always, you didn't mean it, baby, because Joe Jonas unfortunately didn't mean it, but yeah, they were teenagers. We, we forgive and forget, you know, she went on to write the one, so clearly he's forgiven. But yeah, it just really made me value the word forever a lot. When you say forever and always to somebody, you, you better better mean it. You better really mean that you're gonna be around forever and always. Don't just say it when you're dating somebody to be like, oh yeah, it's just like something you say. Like, no, it's not just something you say. It's a very meaningful thing to say and you better mean it if you're gonna say it. I also love the, the line where she says, was I out of line? Did I say something way too honest made you run and hide like a scared little boy? That was one of my favorite lines when I was a teenager too. Me and my friends used to scream that at the top of our lungs. Made you run and hide like a scared little boy like oh such a good line <laughs> here's to everything coming down to nothing here's to silence cuts me to the core isn't it like kind of an emo song almost it's funny because when this song came out I was also in my like emo phase you know listening to like all time low forever the sickest kids mayday parade brands like that and I felt like Forever and Always was like kind of like fit that era, kind of fit that era of an emo song. And at least I felt very cool when I was singing it like that. So yeah, Forever and Always has a very special place in my heart, very worthy of being my number three. Oh my gosh, I don't know which glitter to put on my face. Which one do you think would look the best? Honestly, I'm, I'm gonna go for a more like iridescent one, not one of the more pigmented ones, because obviously, you know, I'm going with a very like gold theme. This one has actual stars in it, so I kind of want to do the star even though it does have like some blue in it too. I don't care. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to do the stars to go off of it's like a million little stars spelling out your name from Untouchable. Yeah, we have to. That was the whole inspiration for the stars and the look. Anyway, moving on to my number two song on Fearless, which is The Way I Loved You. This song gets me in my feelings every time. It's so good. I got star glitter in my eyelashes already. I think I need to use my finger instead of this pad. Anyways, like I was saying, this song gets me in my feelings every single time. It's so beautiful. I love the idea of a song that's all about her finding this guy who's seemingly this perfect guy. He's nice to my mother, talks business with my father. He's charming and endearing and I'm comfortable. But I miss screaming and crying and kissing in the rain and it's 2 a.m. and I'm cursing your name. So in love that I act insane. 
thing cause that's the way I loved you. And you know that's how you can tell this is kind of like a, a younger album of Taylor's because like we we all kind of know as you mature that like even though it's feel it feels very passionate when you're dating someone who there's a lot of like screaming and fighting and kissing in the rain 2am cursing your name it's fun it's exciting because when it's good it's so good but when it's bad it's really bad but it just keeps things exciting as we grow and mature we start to realize like mm, it's not really worth it I'd rather be with a guy who's sweet to my mother and talks business with my father and always calls on time and is like a good guy but you know when you're a teenager and your hormones are raging and your frontal lobe is not fully developed in your brain yet which Taylor's wasn't when she wrote this song because it doesn't fully develop until you're like 25 you know she wasn't thinking that way yet also I am having so much trouble focusing on anything other than this glitter because it is stunning and it is sticking so well are you kidding me slay fire it's like there's so many different stars in it. The glitter I used in my last video was beautiful, but I could not get like the stars to stick in one spot. But this one, they are all sticking so nicely. Oh my gosh, this could actually work out for the Eras tour for me. This song, The Way I Loved You, also reminds me of one of my favorite songs from Speak Now, which obviously came after, but the song Haunted, she also talks about how like the person she's with now is great, but she misses the passion. She misses the drama of the person who wasn't great to her. And it's such a complicated feeling to grapple with, right? Missing someone who you know was bad for you because you miss the excitement. And I think when you can put it in your brain that way, it's a little easier to, to move on from and deal with. But I just, I love the way Taylor talks about, like, that's the way I loved you. It was wild and crazy, complicated, frustrating, slipped away by some mistake. And now she, she misses the screaming and fighting, but there was also kissing in the rain, you know? That's the complicated thing about it is you hear like screaming, fighting, frustrating, complicated, but there was also passion there and it's really hard when you are with somebody like that not to miss those beautiful parts of the relationship. Breaking down, coming undone, it's a roller coaster kind of rush. And I never knew I could feel this much and that's the way I loved you. Just never knowing that you could feel all of these passionate feelings, loving someone so much but also fighting with them and things being complicated and them maybe not actually being good for you. Like it's just an overwhelming feeling. Should I put glitter in the middle of the star? I feel like, yeah, I should. Oh, it's so pretty! I love this glitter. I could just get it and keep putting it on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But anyways, yeah, that's the way I loved you is just a beautiful song. I scream this one every time it comes on, dude. I feel like if you are not screaming that's the way I loved you at the top of your lungs, you're not doing it right. It's very worthy of being my number two. It was almost my number one, but my number one is... Actually, you know what? I forgot to mention about Forever and Always that the piano version is my newly preferred version. I believe that one is only available on the Taylor's version. I don't think that was on the original one, but I freaking love the piano version of Forever and Always. If you haven't listened to that yet, give it a listen because it's absolutely stunning. It's like not just like the same vocals over piano. It's completely different. It's slowed down. There's so much emotion in her voice. It's absolutely beautiful. But anyways, I've already left you hanging for so long. So let's move on to my number one song on Fearless, which if you follow me on Instagram, you will not be surprised at all to find out that it is the other side of the door. The bridge of this song literally is fuel to me. It's literally gasoline in my veins, coffee in my veins, it's caffeine injected right into, I, it's energy. It's energy to me. It just revs me up so much. I've been thinking all more, this was the only one that I did not have to think for more than two seconds about what my number one song was going to be. I struggled with songs two through five, obviously. I ended up picking six, but my number one, I was like, of course, like we can start there. Number one is other side of the door. Now we'll work backwards for everything else because the bridge of that song just gives me so much life. I've literally been thinking all morning. I was like, how can I include the bridge of this song so that I can do my little dancey dance that I have? I have a dance that I made up to the bridge of this song because I needed to exert my energy somehow with the bridge. It just makes me so happy that I ended up making up a little dance for it. And I'm like, how can I show you guys my little dance without including the music and getting copyright strike? I might have to sing it. So if you don't like hearing me sing badly, then maybe skip 
skip over the next 30 seconds of this video because I am going to sing it and do the dance right now. And don't you leave because I know all I need is on the other side of the door with your face and the beautiful eyes and the conversation and the little white lies and the painted picture of a beautiful night you Carry me from the car up the stairs And I broke down crying Was it worth this mess? After everything in that little black dress After everything I must confess I need you <laughs> Bert is on the floor like what the heck is going on? We're dancing for the kids Bert. Yeah, we're dancing for the audience. What do you think? It's just such a good bridge. Can you blame me for dancing? Also, I'm so nosy I want to know exactly what she's referring to with the face and the beautiful eyes and the conversation and the little white lies and the painted picture of a beautiful night You carried me from the car up the stairs and I broke down crying Was she worth this mess after everything in that little plaque dress after everything? I must confess I need you. It's a mon Monologue. That should have been my dramatic monologue when I was auditioning for colleges. I regret that. I do have one regret and it's that I feel like that's all you really need to know about why that's my favorite song. It's just, it's literally fuel to me. I uh, just go listen to it. Just go listen to the other side of the door bridge. It's well worth being my number one. I feel like this fearless look is a perfect excuse to use my yellow gloss from ColourPop, which this is the Stella gloss. It doesn't actually look yellow on the lips. It just has a golden tint hint to it, but I feel like this is a great reason to wear. I was gonna wear a red lip because I was doing my research looking back at the Fearless days, and it does look like she sometimes wore a red lip then, but I feel like Speak Now is like really when the red lip came to be more prominent, and I don't want to distract too much from this gorgeous glitter that we've got going on. I feel like, do I need to put some glitter on my cheeks too? Oh, I feel like I don't have enough glitter on. Maybe I'll just do a little gold highlight. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, this is Warm Sun shine from Odin's Eye. Little golden business going on here. I've been in my no foundation era lately, so I kind of just have been slapping on some highlighter and blush and calling it a day. I haven't even been doing bronzer. Should I put a little in my inner corners? Yeah, let's do it. All right, you guys, here we go. Here's my finished fearless look. It's a little eclectic. I do wish my lashes looked a little better. How do I get that inner corner to look a little more normal, natural? Thanks, Bert. That's good advice. Does anyone know what he said? I feel like I made it look a little better. It'll look fine in pictures. But yeah, I like the way the look turned out. I'm really glad I did the stars. The stars are giving me life. I love the glitter. I 10 out of a thousand, a thousand, no, that doesn't make sense. I a thousand out of 10 <laughs> recommend this Slay Fire glitter. It is like shellacked down there. Slay Fire also was kind enough to give me a code. So you can use code Giovanna if you want to save some money on Slay Fire glitter. I am super super impressed. There's so many like compared to the other glitters I've used There's just so many of the shapes in them Like remember when I was doing my midnights look and I was struggling to get the stars to show up where I wanted them to Not a struggle with this one at all. There's a frick ton of stars in there. Can't wait to keep playing with these Oh my gosh, I feel so cute. I'm dying to hear your top five on fearless This was such a hard one like I've already said a million times So I know you guys are probably gonna struggle to pick your top five too. Let's zoom on and let's zoom in on the eye though one more time so you can really just see how much sparkle you see what I'm saying the stars are everywhere oh it looks so cool I really I love this I'm like am I missing something on the lower lash line do I need like little stars here too that might help yeah let me put some <laughs> I'm making changes at the end of the video all right were the little stars necessary maybe maybe not but I'm glad that I added them this feels more balanced to me now but yeah I love the way the look turned out let me know what your top five on fearless is and uh Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, do me a favor, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I post new videos at least twice a week, and I would love to have you here. Check out my description box for all of the details of all of the makeup on my face today. I'll have them all linked and easy to check out for you. Also, in my description box, I will have my social justice links, so please click on those if you haven't yet. And I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!